Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus has the victory. We all have a call, a call to greatness, a desire for it. We want to do something good. Now is your time. You could change the world, and the world needs changing. So get busy. Shalom World, God's own channel. A warm welcome to all viewers of Shalom World Television to this talk series. My name is Jensen Joseph. I currently live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I have a beautiful wife and three beautiful young children. I want to focus this first talk in sharing my personal testimony. My personal testimony is how I experienced the healing love of God through the act of forgiveness. When I started high school in Chicago, I went to a school where there was a good amount of racial tension. As you can see, I'm I belong to a minority group. And while going through high school, I faced, I dealt with a lot of discrimination during the four years of high school. I was harassed verbally, uh, you know, emotionally. I, I struggled because of the teasing, the ridicule, and I was the type of person who would not react back uh, when I faced all of this ridicule or when people made fun of me, when people harassed me uh, with words. I basically took all of the harassment uh, that happened in, you know, through verbal language and sometimes physically and uh, the discrimination, I took all of that negative and I basically took it deep into my heart and I just put it there. And what happened was keeping all of that negative deep inside me really affected me because what I started to see in my interaction with my parents, with my brothers, I had two younger brothers, and with my relatives, sometimes there would be occasions where this there would be a sudden outburst of anger. I would get angry, furious, and uh, I would hurt them with my language, with my words. Um, I found myself addicted to several types of sinful habits. I really struggled with masturbation and many other sinful habits. And I realized, I knew that these were evil and this was the work of sin because this was the effect of sin. And, I, and although I desired to be free of them, I really struggled with trying to be free of these habits. I continued to you know, engage in these sinful habits and, and I continued in, my, in, my, in, in, in controlling my temper. Um, I remember there was a, a one time uh, where I had a family gathering uh, gathering with many of my relatives and there was an occasion where I just exploded in anger at my brother with my youngest brother and we got into a fight and this happened at a family event you know and and uh, such instances really uh, affected me uh, tremendously because I began to be afraid of myself and I began to realize man I've got to do something about this hate and this anger that was lying deep within me this build-up that was happening inside of me and I, and I continued in this manner. Uh, by the grace of God, during my freshman year in high school, I was able to attend a youth retreat. And during this retreat, I saw for the first time young people who were excited about God, who had this, this, this love of God, this joy on their faces. Uh, for the first time in my life, I 
saw young people who were not afraid, who were not intimidated in any way to talk about God, to share their faith experience. And, and it really captivated me because I grew up in a good Catholic family and I knew about God, but it was all at the intellectual level, it was at the mind level. It never really transferred to the heart. And as I was going through this retreat, I saw young people who were, who were really loved life and they were full of joy and they were so happy, you know. And despite the fact that sometimes me and my friends and other people at the retreat would, sometimes we would think what they're doing up there is comic and we would burst out laughing. These young people who were ministering to us were in no way intimidated. They were excited to be there and they were so passionate about their faith. And I remember at the end of the retreat, I really longed to have what they have, to be full of joy, to be happy, to love life. And I prayed to God, Lord, I want to be like that. I want that. And so this was my prayer. And after that retreat, I had an opportunity to go to multiple retreats. And I began to go to at least one or two retreats a year. I also began to be active in youth ministry. I had an opportunity to be part of a youth service team for the Charismatic Renewal in Chicago. And I began to work in youth ministry with other adults. And it was a, a wonderful time for me. I really began to grow in my faith, at the same time be able to share my faith. But even as I continued in ministry, some of my struggles with my sinful habits and, uh, and uh, the outbursts of anger still continued. And I was really depressed in a way because here I was trying to share the good news of Christ with others, but on the side, I was still struggling with the habitual sin. With the, with the outbursts of anger, with forgiveness, um, or trying to forgive those people who hurt me in my life. And this was really, uh, I really became desperate. I wanted freedom from this, from the slavery of sin. And I remember at this time, as I prayed to God in desperation, the Lord telling me, Jensen, I want to heal you. I want to set you free from this negative that is lying deep within your heart. But I wanted, but in order for me to do that, I need to walk with you into each and every one of those painful situations. And I want to touch those painful memories with my hand that is bathed in my blood that was shed for you at Calvary. And I said, Lord, I do not want to revisit those negative experiences. It's too painful for me. So I kept resisting the Lord. And so this happened through four years of my high school where I continued to receive the negative, painful uh, situations in my life. The Lord kept telling me He wants to heal me, but I kept resisting Him. I continued to work in youth ministry, but as I said, in all of this circumstance, I was becoming more discouraged because I was not finding happiness that was lasting. I was not face of feeling joy that would last into the next day. And so after high school, I started my university studies uh, in Chicago. I went to a Catholic university and it was a wonderful university. It was a wonderful environment because for the first time in my life, I did not face any discrimination. I was in an environment where people accepted me for who I was. I faced, the ex I faced acceptance and love and just peace in this environment. And I said, I'm rid of the four years of hell that I went through in high school, and now I am in heaven. That's what I, how I felt at that time. And even during this time, as I continued in ministry, I continued with my studies. At this time, I really began to feel even more uh, uh, longing in my heart to be, uh, to, to feel that joy in my heart uh, that I experienced from the Lord last into the next day. Because I would receive the touch of the Lord, but it would never last uh, into the next day. It would never flow into the next week. I always felt myself going back to my habits, uh, going back to the sinful habits and, and struggling with uh, anger and so forth. And I said, Lord, something's got to change. Something has to change. I want to be free. I want to be rid of my past because it's, it's, it's like it's, it's holding me captive. And the Lord kept telling me, I, can, I want to do that for you, but you have got to give me permission to do this one thing. And I said, no way. I don't want to, I don't want to revisit those years of high school 
which were so painful. One day at the end of a retreat, one of the, my friends who worked in youth ministry with me, she came to me and she said, Jensen, I want you to do something for me. And she told me, I want you to put your, both your hands on my shoulder. I want you to look me in the eye. And I want you to see one of the persons who hurt you in high school. I want you to tell this person what he or she did to you. And then I want you to say, I forgive you. And for the first time in my life, I did not resist. I did not have the power to resist. I said, I am ready now. I want to go through with this. And so one by one by one, I began to do this. I looked at my friend and I did not see her face. I, in my imagination, I brought to my memory one of the persons who hurt me in high school. I told this person what he or she did to me. And then I said, I forgive you. And as I began to do this, I just began to cry uncontrollably. My heart began to weep and weep. And I just felt as I was uh, as I was saying the words of forgiveness, I forgive you for what you did to me. I felt something heavy lifted out of me each and every time. And it was a long night of prayer for me, but it was the most powerful experience in my life of prayer and of healing. Because as I was going through this, as I said, I just felt this weight one by one just being taken out of me. and. With each act of forgiveness, I felt more and more lighter. And at the end of that prayer time, one of my friends, uh, he was a Hispanic young man. He kind of had long hair. So when you look at him, he kind of looked like Jesus. But he came up close to me. And as I was um, ending this time of prayer, I felt so light. And I just remember falling into his arms and he held me there. And I felt as if Jesus was just holding me close to his heart, embracing me. And I felt empty at the time. And as my friend gently let me fall to the ground on my knees and just, and just stay there, in that emptiness, I suddenly felt the love of God flowing like a river into my heart and just filling me. The peace that I'd never experienced in my life, a love and joy just filling my heart and I just felt so full of joy and I just enjoyed that moment. I relished that moment and I stayed there and I could feel for the first in my life. I could, I was convicted that here, this moment, I feel now that I am completely free, completely free of the burden of sin, the burden of guilt, the burden of that shame. I felt that the Lord had completely uprooted, taken all of that negative stuff away from me. And why did this happen? Because finally, I came to a moment in my life where I was so desperate. And in that desperation, I cried out to God, Lord, help me, help me, Jesus. I do not want to continue in this lifestyle of sin. I do not want to struggle with habitual sin. I want to be free of anger. I want to be free of rage. I want to be free of my addiction to masturbation and all these sinful habits, I want to be free. And the Lord said, I want to set you free because I am the wounded healer. I love you. I laid my life down my life for you, but I want to do something. I want to walk with you into each one of those painful experiences. And I want to touch all of those wound, the spots in your heart, the areas in your heart that are bleeding. I want to touch with my hand that is bathed in my blood and I want to bring healing and restoration. Will you allow me to do that? And I finally, in that moment of desperation, I said, there is no other option. And I said, Lord, I am ready. Yes, please do that. And he did not let me walk by myself, but he walked beside me, taking me to each and every painful situation, helping me to say what happened in each one of those situations using my, my tongue, uh, saying those words, uh, describing that situation, and then looking at the person who hurt me and saying the words of forgiveness, I forgive you, I forgive you. He gave me the grace through his spirit to do that. When I did that, I felt that heavy burden just coming out of me, like it was never again going to come back to me again. I felt something was taken out of me permanently, not temporarily, but permanently. 
And this is the wonderful, amazing work of God, the healing power of God. The Lord wants to heal us permanently. He wants to make us whole. He doesn't do a partial work on us. He heals us holistically. All we have to do is trust him that he has the best interest in mind, in his mind for us. And he wants to finish his work that, uh, that uh, finish the work that he began in us to uh, completion. He wants to bring that work to completion by healing us completely because he is the wounded healer. He loves us. So I, I just thank the Lord for giving me the grace to say yes to him, to allow him to come into my past, to allow him to heal me in all of that brokenness, to allow, uh, to allow him to, uh, to walk with me, you know, and, 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 and just touch me in all of those painful uh, areas. And, and, and really, uh, I felt such love, such love, because as the hate was being pulled out one by one, as the rage was just being rooted out, as the, as the, as the deep shame and guilt, all of that was being taken out, I felt just this river of love coming and taking its place. I just felt like a waterfall, uh, like the, uh, a waterfall of the love of God just, just pouring over that. The blood of Christ just pouring over that. And just, just, just that peace coming upon me and healing me. And it was so wonderful. It was so beautiful. And I just realized, man, how beautiful it is, how wonderful it is when the Lord is given permission to heal us. Because that healing process, as painful as it may seem, it is also very freeing. It is also very, uh, it, it also brings such joy that, that, that nobody else can give. Because the Lord doesn't abandon us even for a second, as the healing is happening, the Lord actually stays beside us. And He is with us all the way through, all the way through. And that was the beauty of it. The Lord was with me all the way through. And I was able to be free of all that burden. And I was able to uh, then continue in my life free of the sinful habits. I was able to I feel the joy of the Lord that I would receive every day lasting into the next second, lasting into the next minute, lasting into the next hour, lasting into the next day. And I felt so good and so happy. The, la the joy of the Lord was in my heart and nobody, nobody, nothing was going to take that joy away from me. And I felt so happy because this joy was now lasting. I could say, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, each and every day of my life. And even when I committed sin and I fell uh, away from God, I was able to come right back to him immediately through the sacrament of confession. And I felt uh, the grace just flowing through the sacrament of confession. I felt a deep commitment in my heart uh, to going to confession frequently and really receiving the grace of the sacrament. I just could not imagine staying more than a few hours away from the Lord, uh, being disconnected from Him. I wanted Him so badly. And I, and I felt that it was not impossible, that it was all possible because the Lord was with me and that He was not going to allow me to slip away from him again. So this is the power of the healing of God. And this healing will happen through the act of forgiveness. So I just invite all the viewers of Shalom World Television, if you have experienced hurt because through, the, through your own sins or through the sins of others, I just encourage you to open your heart to Jesus, who is the wounded healer. He can make you whole again. He can restore you. He can do a marvelous work through, through His healing power. All we have to do is say yes to Him. All we have to do is trust Him and give Him permission. And He will do a magnificent, a wonderful job. And that healing will bring so much grace that will last into the next day. That healing will, will, will bring so much joy that will, will continue into the next uh, week 
and it is amazing. And if there is anybody in your life that you need to forgive, please, I encourage you to say the words of forgiveness because that act of forgiveness will allow the healing grace of God to work to its completion and bring that fulfillment in your life. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the wounded healer. I thank you for loving us so beautifully, for your amazing healing power and love. And I just ask you to come into the life of each and every broken person and touch them and bring that healing in them to completion. Dear Blessed Mother, I ask you to pray for all of our viewers and I ask you to lead them to the healing uh, touch of the Lord. I ask you to pray that each and every viewer who is hurting and broken will allow the healing grace of God to work to completion in their lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Blessed Mother, for praying for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you have good news, we expect you to want to share it. Salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who for love of us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Salvation in His name, and He is the only Savior, is what we are on earth for. Therefore, all those who spread the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, we should encourage them. I can speak, but how many people can I reach alone? But the media, the television people, the radio, the newspapers, and all those who use the computer and its derivatives in various ways to spread the gospel. We must thank them. We must encourage them. We must work with them so that they can continue to spread the good news. There's so much news that is not so wonderful in the world, but there is also news that is wonderful on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage them and beg God to bless them, especially the Shalom World TV. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.